Hey there guys, welcome to Phone Arena, it's Basil here and today we'll be taking you through a video review of the Nokia N9, a bittersweet device that marks the end of an era for the Finnish giant. However, Nokia are going out with a bang, marking the end of an era on the one hand but also the beginning of another. So this device runs me their Harmattan version of Mego, which will probably be the last time we see Mego in the foreseeable future on a Nokia device, but it also ships with amazingly gorgeous hardware. Now it's the design which we'll be kicking things off with and we will be taking a look at the software a little bit later. So starting with how the device looks and feels and starting with looks, well, you can gauge for yourself. This is a standout device with absolutely no buttons on the fascia. It just looks and feels really, really premium and considered. It's all made of a unibody plastic, and while we hear the words plastic and sometimes we think, meh, plastic, this device sets itself apart from other plastic and indeed metal devices. It really does look and feel so considered. The plastic's single colored throughout, and so what we mean by that is the, it isn't painted. Um, so if you do scratch or chip this, it's not gonna scratch or chip white, it'll scratch or chip, in this case, blue. Really, really love this handset as far as the consideration goes. You've also got a beveled display which works very well with the interface. The interface requires a lot of swiping from extreme corners and the bevel display just reassures you that you've reached the edge of the screen which we absolutely love. Taking a look at how it feels in the hand, and you've got a long curvaceous device. Now the device has flat corners at the top and bottom and completely smooth curved corners at the side. In turn, when holding the phone, it feels extremely nice and comfortable in the hand for the most part until you do indeed reach those flat corners. The flat corners can dig into the heel of the hand quite a bit and aren't quite as comfortable as some of the more forgiving curved corners we've come into contact with. That said, this device does look really, really good and for that sharp design, it's almost worth having that slight hindrance in terms of feel. Taking a closer look at the specifics and we can see the beveled screen on the N9 is a true beauty, measuring in at 3.9 inches from edge to edge. With WVGA resolution on board, you also get pretty good pixel density, far better than we've seen from any exclusively touch screen device from Nokia in the past. Colors on the device are nice and vibrant, really, really popping and looking absolutely great. And clarity for the most part is really good as well. The only thing we will say is that with slight viewing angle changes, you can get a blue hue across the screen. Now this doesn't dampen detail. You'll see everything stays really nice and sharp. However, like we said, that blue hue is definitely something to bear in mind as it does impede on image usage, especially when doing things like web browsing and reading, um, looking at content with a huge amount of white. Obviously not noticeable in any way with the darks. Now at the top end of the device is a micro SIM card slot as found on the iPhone 4 and 4S, a micro USB card slot, sorry, a micro USB reader, and also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now to fit the top piece, the top end together, what you do is you just effectively insert the micro SIM card slot, SIM card into the slot, sorry, as done, close the flap, and what you end up with is a perfectly lush corner which looks fantastic. While the left hand side of the device doesn't have any buttons and is just smooth curvaceousness, on the right hand side you have a lock button or an unlock button if you will and a volume rocker as well. At the bottom end of the N9 you'll find the loudspeaker and slightly above that at the base of the screen is the front facing camera. Flip over the device and you can find the, re uh, the rear facing camera. This is an 8 megapixel sensor with an f2.2 autofocus lens. It's also got a dual LED flash as well. The Nokia N9 runs Nokia's Harmattan iteration of Migot. This runs across three planes. You have your apps drawer, as you can see. It's like swipe to the left and you can see your updates. This comes in the form of Facebook feeds as well as Twitter feeds and any text messages or emails you might receive, which are also displayed up at the top in the notifications bar. What you've also got is a multitasking pane on the right hand side. This displays all your open applications and with a long press 
you can actually access the application. Sorry, with a short press, you can access the application. And with a long press, as you can see, you can close specific windows or indeed at the bottom, it says close all. You can do that. If you access an application, so let's say we'll open maps and we want to open um, send the maps to the background, we can just swipe up sending the maps to the background. If we want to access an application and close it, we can actually swipe it down. And what this does, it sends it not just to the background, but off to the rubbish bin, closing the application completely, which is great. This is a really nice intuitive way to work through your phone. Unfortunately, this doesn't apply to all applications. So take, for example, video and a swipe down will simply do exactly the same as a swipe up. So it's not entirely consistent and it might be a small bug, but nevertheless, it does work predominantly well throughout. It also offers a very nice way of interacting with the phone in terms of sliding. It really is an edge to edge sliding experience. So for example, if we open an application and we slide up partially and hold, we can then access four shortcuts. The lock screen is also sliding oriented. When we unlock, we have to slide the full length of the screen to unlock the handset. We didn't specify, but from the, um, when the phone's completely locked, sorry, as with, for example, the N8 before and the AMOLED displayed handsets from Nokia, you have a clock display in the background, even when the phone's on standby. A double tap will awaken the phone and then the slide will completely unlock the phone. It's a nice two stage process, which ensures the phone won't go off in your pocket without you being aware. So there you have it. That's the crux of Mego. It really is that simple, which is fantastic. As far as the phone applications go, you have your standard dialer, for example, which is all very nice and finger friendly. You can access your call log and contacts from it, and you can add a contact. This gives you a very simple range of fields to input initially, and with a drop down menu, a much more descriptive um, set of information with other information available. As you can see, you've got some very nice clean typography and all the fields are finger friendly as well. We could very easily access exactly what we wanted to, and we can just swipe that out of the way to get to our main menu. As far as the contacts go, um, it's all very, very self-explanatory. But what's really nice is you can show just your phone contacts, your Twitter contacts or your Google contacts. In addition, you have a really cool calendar. The reason it's cool is because you've got the split pane view in monthly view. Um, you can swipe, whoops, you can swipe through months. As you can see, when swiping horizontally, it can at times close the window um, if you do it from edge to edge. So you want to be careful of that. When you flick through your calendar, just tap a day and you can see a description of the events in the bottom panel. This works very nicely in landscape as well. Worth mentioning quickly, we weren't able to sync the Google Calendar with the handset. However, we did manage to sync Google Contacts, so hopefully that'll be ironed out soon enough. You've also got messaging, and the messaging works extremely predictably. It's a very simple conversation view, and it looks very appealing. Uh, much like the rest of Mego, in its simplicity, it's quite beautiful. Now, we've also got a very, very nice keyboard indeed. It offers fantastic haptic feedback, along with a click sound that really just reassures you you have hit the key very, very accurately. Um, it works in landscape and portrait, and we'd be tempted to say that the landscape keyboard's among one of the top five keyboards we've used on a handset. Unfortunately, due to the dimensions of the handset in portrait, it can be a little bit narrow, so it may take some getting used to. As far as the clock function goes, it has a little bit of charm about it. Now, while it looks like a standard clock, as soon as you come to set an alarm, you get a very finger friendly clock UI. This is a typical Nokia touch, adding a huge amount of character to the handset. The, cal the calculate, sorry, takes full advantage of the black am clear black AMOLED display. While the notes just hugs the simplicity of the rest of Mego with notes you can tap on, save, and you can just add a new note very simply. Very, very easy and clean. As far as accounts go, you can add a wide, wide range of accounts. 
These range from Skype, right through, which is pre-installed by the way, right through to Google, Facebook, Twitter, Nokia account, um, Flickr, as well as other mail clients, Picasa, YouTube, and there's mail for exchange supports as well. We really, really found the deep integration with the Twitter and Facebook also very good indeed. This really makes uh, Nine quite a competitive handset. Take for example Facebook, it's a dedicated application and we found it worked very well. As for Flickr, uh, Twitter, sorry, you can see while it loads up all our feeds, it's a very, very familiar UI. You can also access your direct messages and your mentions as well as a range of other information. And we can just close these by swiping down. As far as other pre-installed applications go, you have a document viewer as well, and you've got your standard OV maps, which we'll come on to a little bit later. There's also AccuWeather as well as an RSS reader. There's AP Mobile, a news feed app, which um, can actually integrate into your feeds in your feeds column. And you've also got YouTube as well as a few games such as Angry Birds, um, Need for Speed Shift, Golf, and a Space Simulator. Other apps we've installed ourselves from the um, OV store. The onboard music player is very good. At the top, when you open it up, you've got a 3x3 grid, which is very attractive indeed. The 2x2 um, square in the top left-hand corner displays your currently playing track, while surrounding that are uh, individual icons indicating recently played tracks. You can view by artists, album, songs, playlists, and indeed by OV Music, where you can purchase additional music content. The sound that outputs from the Nokia 9 is very good indeed, with really rounded audio properties. This means that if you're listening to a track, bass levels are pretty good, and it just really is quite an immersive experience. This also helps very, very um, much for video content as well. We can click through on a video. And you can see this video formatted perfectly for the Nokia N9 screen plays back beautifully with no hassle whatsoever. We can share the video, rename it or delete it. It's worth mentioning that with the music player we're unable to delete music directly from the music player. So um, you'll need to have it plugged into a PC or a file explorer to manage your music. But fortunately with video this isn't the case which is quite nice. Unfortunately, however, codec support on the Nokia N9 isn't quite as rich as on its predecessor. And while it does technically support DIVX and H.264 and a few other formats, including MKV files, which is very cool, sadly, it doesn't support these up to a resolution of high definition. So 720p and you're out of luck. The standard WVGA resolution, however, should be supported absolutely fine and was indeed with all our tests. With 720p, we even had trouble playing back an MP4 file that we downloaded as a podcast, so you may want to bear this in mind. That said, the rest of the time, video truly looks excellent. As far as the camera experience goes, the UI is quite simple and minimalistic. On the right hand side, you've got a gallery shortcut, a camera button, as well as a switch between video and camera, um, photo, sorry. You've got on the left hand side a shortcut to the settings menu. This settings menu gives you a range of options right through scene, flash, as well as white balance, exposure, not to mention a range of others. We'd have quite liked to see this a little bit more integrated into the camera module as it tended to be a little bit annoying tapping out into a menu and then doing some endless scrolling just to change a simple feature. The actual performance of the camera tends to be quite good indeed. With touch to focus, as you can see, it all seems to just look very, very slick indeed and be quite responsive. 
Unfortunately, the focus locked every now and then, and it wasn't playing very nice in macro, well, which is a shame. However, when it did work, it did produce some astounding results. As you can see, it's able to deal with low light very well indeed for a camera phone. Considering the physical sensor size is smaller than the, its predecessor, Nokia have done a very, very good job with this handset, and the maximum aperture is f2.2. So as you can see, for example, with the close-up shot, you can actually get some very nice depth of field with your macro um, shots as well. Really general thumbs up with the camera. So aside from the focus issue, that is. As far as the video camera goes, and unfortunately it wasn't quite as phenomenal an experience. As far as the UI goes, it's all very similar to the camera, and in the settings, you've just got a few less options. That said, with the, reco um, the recorded output, what you'll tend to find is slightly, um, slight artifacting, sorry, and muted colours. It does have very good touch to focus, which worked surprisingly better in the video at times than it did in the photo taking. That might just be luck, but um, either way, the video experience at 720p is also a little bit behind the curb, with the Samsung Galaxy S2, for example, and the iPhone 4 producing some astounding 1080p video at the moment. As far as connectivity on the Nokia N9 goes, it's very good. What you get is your standard um, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. Well, there's a GPS and an A-GPS, but you've also got Pentapan 3G and Quad Band GSM. So this truly is a worldly phone if ever there was one. Another nice feature is the uh, inclusion of NFC. This enables simple file sharing with a simple tap. So this file sharing won't actually transfer through NFC, but will do so through Bluetooth. So the NFC will bypass all the passwords, etc. You can also turn the handset into a Wi-Fi hotspot. This is a very nice touch. We've gotten so used to this on our Android and iOS devices that we don't tend to take 3G dongles out anywhere near as much as we used to. And if you're one of those people, then you will be very grateful for this inclusion in Mego. It worked very well and reliably, just to mention. What you also get is Nokia's Maps and Drive. Now, Maps is pretty much unchanged for the most part, so we're not going to look into that, but what we will look at is Drive. What Drive offers is a very nice finger-friendly approach to Nokia Maps, so it includes full multi-touch support, but your nice finger-friendly icons. and you can view it as a, in a number of views. The inbuilt web browser works very well as well. While we can open Phone Arena now, the page is still loading, and we can see we can interact with it quite smoothly. A reason for this may be the lack of flash support. This means, like with the iPhone, it has far less to work with. There doesn't tend to be too much slowdown at all. Pages render nicely, and also, text looks extremely crisp. In portrait view, it's also very, in landscape view, so it's also very nice and easy to work your way around the page. Although, the taskbar at the top takes up quite a lot of room, so we would have quite liked to be able to auto hide that. As you can see, when we press menu, we haven't got the option to make it full screen. One thing which we haven't said, which really relates strongly to connectivity, is the share function. This tends to be pr um, pr uh, prominent throughout the whole UI, and enables you to directly share to Twitter, Facebook, or a mail client of your choosing, including text messaging. So the web browsing does tend to be very good. We're connected through Wi-Fi now, so as soon as we click through, we can just load the page very, very quickly. It's worth mentioning, while it doesn't have flash support, the Nokia 9 does support HTML5. As far as performance goes, it's a bit of a hit and miss with the Nokia 9. On the one hand, you can have loads and loads of applications multitasking, and you can literally just fly through them. In the same breath, however, we can have hardly anything open, and it staggers and stutters. 
Another thing is inconsistency. So for example, with this application open, the web browser, if we swipe down, that's going to, well, that should technically close the web browser. We can try that with a calendar. And you can see swiping down in this instance didn't always close a calendar. Now, these kinds of niggles aren't going to ruin the entire experience. However, they are present. So it's worth noting. Given also the questionable um, support for future Migo devices, um, well, not future Migo devices, for Migo in the future, um, we're not entirely confident in the OS yet. However, we are extremely charmed by it. It's a beautiful, simple, clean visual OS, which delivers throughout in terms of both user experience and functionality. As far as battery life on the handset goes, we could easily get a day out of this. And this is, by the way, with all our um, Google Talk and Facebook, for example, online, as well as with Wi-Fi on. If you switch these off and are a little bit frugal with battery life, you should be able to see two days pretty easily. Call quality on the handset is also very good. It's slightly less clear and softer than we'd like to when being on the handset itself. However, um, the noise cancellation worked very well. What we also found was that the other call, the caller on the other side of the line reported that we sounded fantastic. So it delivers some very clear, crisp tones. There's not really much we can say regarding the Nokia N9's flaws, which can't be remedied by the fact that we're holding a little bit of history in our hands. The fact that this history looks and feels so great only adds to basically the reasons we fell in love with the Nokia N9. However, love is irrational, and we'd find it quite difficult to recommend it. Reasons being, as we mentioned, the OS is quite buggy, and we're guessing support for it won't be too great. The market also isn't really something anywhere near as competitive as even the BlackBerry market, for example, which says something if you're a real keen app user. So if you're really future focused and want a device that you can keep updating and tweaking, then the Nokia N9 probably won't fit the bill. That said, it certainly does deliver across the board in a lot of ways, especially in terms of design. And the operating system really brings some ingenuitive, beautiful, explicitly Nokia traits to the board. If you're looking for an alternative and want an Android handset, then, well, we'd be tempted to say that the Arc S was one of the only Android handsets that really competes on the design front. If you're looking for a Nokia alternative, then the Nokia N8 is still a fantastic phone with a beautiful camera, and it'll be getting Symbian Bell um, in the near future with any luck. So it's worth checking the N8 out if you're a real Nokia fan. Alternatively, you can consider the iPhone 4S. While it might not have anywhere near as much personality as the Nokia N8, N9, sorry, it definitely does compete on the style stakes. This has been our video review of the Nokia N9. For more on this and other handsets, just check out www.phonearena.com.